Hello, good evening, God's people. I want to welcome you once again to Rousing the Saints of the Most High, um, a program that uh, um, God is facilitating through us for the purpose of uh, um, we rousing the saints of God who may have been asleep one way or the other um, to getting the understanding to getting the understanding of what God is doing in the now it is so important that uh, the people of God understand what he's doing now uh, because when we understand we're able to apply ourselves to them as we should you know we're able to apply ourselves to them as we should you know Bible says that the men of Issachar they had command of their brethren not that we, that is what we're seeking, seek, uh, seeking we're not seeking to our commandment or our brethren but nevertheless they had the place of leadership among their brethren because they understood the time and the season that Israel was in and what Israel ought to do uh, at those times and seasons. So it is important that we also understand what God is doing in our day and time, in this time and day, so that we can apply ourselves to them. Praise God. The Lord is good. Um, uh, right now I'm just trying to share around to so that others who are um, not who would otherwise not have seen the message would see it um, and be able to take advantage of it by the grace of God okay Praise God. Okay, I think that's all right. The Lord is good. Uh, God bless you, everyone that is online with us this morning. So we've been talking about... Um, Rousing the army of the Lord. Rousing the army of the Lord. Now, a lot of us are a part of this army. Yes, we are in the churches. And there's nothing wrong with being in the churches. We're in the churches, we're in the different kinds of um, groupings where we found ourselves, fellowships and all that. Doing whatever we are instructed to do and whatever our hands find to do in all of those places. Uh, but. It's also good for us to know and to understand that um, um, we, you know, we need to get the understanding of what God is doing now so that we can appropriate ourselves to these positions that God has ordained for us, very importantly. Now, um, beginning from yesterday, we were teaching on the four faces of the eagles relating to the regiments of the army of the Lord. There is no army that is arranged half as early. Every army is arranged uh, neatly, with precision, with order, and uh, with some measures of deliberateness. So, and then we are also supposed to be um, in that way also. Um, God has ordained us to be positioned deliberately in key places where he has ordained for us to be. Just like Peter says that we are living stones and we used to build Zion. You know, so living stones are uh, stones that are used to build um, uh, God's house. And then we must find our place where we belong in the, among the stones that form the structure of the house of God. Uh, this can also be tantamount to understanding where we are placed in the army. Of the Lord and yesterday we really uh, if you're not here yesterday I'd like you to go get the message of yesterday the message of yesterday was fantastic because why did I say it's fantastic because it went even beyond my own study it went beyond what I thought um, I knew 
and uh, he went beyond all of that and Bilardo introduced me to um, certain um, thresholds where if I would look with, um, a little bit more into would bring me into a wellspring of understandings, of revelations and of activations that would enable the saints to be well positioned where God has ordained for them to be. So, um, like I usually say, the New Testament, the scriptures of the New Testament do not um, explain the, um, the structure, the physical expression of the kingdom and the, the, the structure of the physical expression of the kingdom. For example, this is what I'm saying. The, the, the kingdom is supposed to be established in the physical, um, in the physical realm. It's going, it's, the, the, the kingdom will be built into institutions. They'll become institutions. They'll become life orders, L-I-F-E-O-R-D-E-R-S. You know, life orders. Um, the kingdom will be, um, you know, uh, expressed in even ethnic nationalities, whole ethnic nationalities will embrace the culture of the kingdom. The kingdom will be cultural, uh, the kingdom will be uh, in the air, that is that, is that which, um, you know, overcomes the norms of society that are anti-God's will anti-God's purposes. So the kingdom will be established in all those ways. Now, the New Testament scriptures are more applicable, applicable internally. I'm not saying internally that doesn't have an outward expression. It's, for example, love, the teaching about love, teaching about honesty. Yes, they have outward applications, but they are mainly internal things. Uh, they are internal values. They are values of the kingdom. They are internal values. So, um, so on that, on that, um, so that's what the New Testament teaches. So that we can conform ourselves to the Christ life, so that we can be saviors indeed that will appear on Mount Zion to judge the mountains of of Edom. Now, so, but it's when you get to the Old Testament, because it's the same God that gave the old that also gave the new. When you get to the Old Testament, you will see the typical, physical, tangible applications you will for example if they are going to be kings for example if you are going to rule over a city the scripture tells us about what kings should be the scriptures of the old testament tells us what kings should be you know because perhaps we're going to reign they're going to reign over nations ethnic groupings geographical expressions that's literal mm -hmm. that's literal now the new testament does not tell you the structure of kingship but the New Testament tells you the Old Testament rather tells you the structure of kingship it tells you that a king should not multiply horses a king should not multiply wives a king should not oppress the people yes we know that by the internal uh, internal structuring of the scriptures of the New Testament we're still going to get into if you were following the New Testament you're still going to get all of this not multiplying horses not multiplying this not multiplying that now, when I talk about the of the New Testament, I'm talking about the epistles. Uh -huh. But when you look at even the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, which, are, which I call the constitutions of the, of the kingdom and of the New Testament age, you see that there are direct mentions of things, of, of structures, abstract structures, physical structures, in the place for example say the meek shall inherit the earth and that's literal so and and how we're supposed to conduct ourselves in the old covenant in, under the old testament you see the lord says they should not use unjust weights you understand that still applies and that's how we're going to rule in the kingdom when the kingdom comes you know so we're not supposed to apply unjust weights we're not supposed to um do certain things the thing the ones that are not ceremonial that are not ceremony, that are not passed away with the Lord, the ones that are that are of the morality of God. You understand? There are some that are passed away. This area of not planting tomatoes with groundnut and all that. 
those are ceremonial and all that they, they have passed away now but there are structures of the old covenant that tell us how to behave when we get into kingdom you understand it doesn't have anything to do with sacrifice it doesn't have anything to do with the priesthood it doesn't we are we know the new testament has ordained that for us you understand and like i also say following the scriptures of the new testament will make you eventually to see arrive at the place where those old old testament scriptures is trying to lead you into you know just like scripture says that like, um the bible says that, that the, what for what the lord could not do uh, god has sent his son to us uh, um, to to take the uh, to to fulfill the law, to take the punishment of not fulfilling the law and all that, so that the just requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. There is a judge requirement, just requirement of the law. What the law seeks to achieve and attain to, to to attain to in the life of man, so that it will be fulfilled in us who do not walk after the flesh but after the spirit. You know, when we walk in the spirit, we eventually fulfill this things that have been written in the law but it's also very important for everybody to know what the outward expression of those things should be you understand so the old covenant scriptures gives you the outward expressions of what they should be meanwhile the new testament gives you the inward configuration of what those things should be we're talking about kingdom now and talking about church life hallelujah we're not talking about church life we're talking about kingdom life Apologies, I just feel dry throat this morning. So, hallelujah. Okay, so um, we're looking at the structure of the army as it is given to us in Numbers in chapter uh, Numbers in chapter 2. And we said they were broken into, the armies were divided into four, according to the four faces of the cherub, which are also the insignia or the emblems of the four divisions. The four divisions were led by four tribes. Um, one is led by Judah, the other led by um, Reuben, the other led by Dan, and the last one led by uh, Ephraim. Okay, now the one led by Judah as insignia of the face of the lion, the one led by um, uh, Ephraim has a Reuben as a signal of the face of a man, the one led by Dan as a signal of the face of, a, of an eagle or a flying eagle, and then the one led by um, uh, Ephraim as a signal of the face of the ox. Now, when we're looking at so, so we say that God put the armies there, and uh, this um, discussion doesn't have the what you the normal church believer is acquainted with because this is the kingdom this is uh it is a step beyond the church age the church it tells you about prayer tell you about walking in love tell you about um, evangelism um, worship and all that and it ends there and um, tells you about um, having a good life um, it tells you a little bit about sacrifice for the Lord and then the lower church life tells you about the fact that every sacrifice is for your profit here. That's a lower church life. <laughs> the real church life should tell you about sacrifice and that there is an eternal worth for your sacrifices for the Lord. Now, so, so, um, it, so it may look strange to the person who is not... Um, who is not initiated into kingdom issues. Now, what is the kingdom? I just feel I should just say a little bit about it. What is the kingdom? The kingdom of God is, um, is the takeover of this worldly system by God. Look at that. The kingdom of God is a takeover of the, these worldly systems by God. And um, it is expressed in diverse areas. There's a spiritual kingdom which is inside us. When we get to that place where that inside kingdom takes over our hearts, the inside kingdom is in our hearts, in our souls, and our souls, rather. So, and there are enemies of God in our souls, and also in our hearts. 
in our intent, in our decisions, in our likes, in our thoughts, there are uh, things that do not agree with God's intents and purposes there. When that is taken over, then kingdom has come in that person. When it's taken over by God, by the nature of Christ, kingdom has come. Then we have um, the kingdom as expressed in the church, what we call the universal church. Yes, it's a kingdom of God, but it is not yet fully taken over by God. Um, you know, we see our man-made doctrines, we see our denominations, we see have all of those things, we see our, uh, our perceptions as ruling us. But the Bible says we're going to come into unity of the faith. When that happens, when we come to that place of the unity of the faith, then um, then we have come, the, then that which is called the universal church becomes fully the kingdom of God. Praise God. And then we have the third one, which is the ex physical, tangible expression of the, of the values of God upon the nations. And that is also applicable in diverse areas, in uh, diverse means. The first uh, is that the air will be taken over. The second one, yeah, and once the air is taken over then, and I explained about the air yesterday, please, can you check the 11th series, 11th uh, episode? When you check the 11th episode, you will see some of this that I'm talking about there. So the air is going to be taken over, and then the cultures and the norms of people, and what is acceptable, consequently be taken over and eventually um, the pool of man from which leadership can be sorted from will be uh, tangibly uh, of the man-child company of the people in whose life the kingdom has been established because the air will be filled by the kingdom and then the cultures and the morals of men will be filled by the kingdom and then to look for the leader the best of men will be those who are of the kingdom, who are believers in Christ Jesus, and who, has, who have learned to walk according to his will and according to his purpose for them. So in order to take over these kingdoms of this world, is, that's what we're talking about this morning. I look at it from the four faces of the ego, uh, of, the, of the cherub brother. So we looked at um, the face of lion, Yesterday, we see how the face of the ox, we see how the face of the, um, the uh, of uh, the fine eagle, and the face of man, you know, to look at. So let's look at um, Numbers in chapter 2. On the south side shall be the standard of the forces with Reuben, according to their armies, and the leader of the children of Reuben shall be Elizabeth the son of Shidor, and his army was 146,500. Then comes the tribe of the God, and the leader of the tribe of, of the children of God shall be Elisaph, Elisaph, the son of Ruel, and his army was numbered at 45,650. All who were numbered according to their armies of the forces with Reuben, 150, 51,450. They shall be the second to break camp. So you see, so there is the first to break camp. Judah shall be the first to break camp, and Reuben shall be the second to break camp. And we talked about Judah yesterday, and so said Judah has to do with um, the establishment of the, the overall leadership of God over every other leadership. In Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, it says, uh, beginning from verse 1, it says, The word which Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above um, every other hill, every hill. And um, so, uh, what is that saying? It's talking about the fact that those who have the principle of God's kingdom and God's lifestyle, working in their lives shall overcome, shall um, attack the leadership of the, of the, that is based on the systems of man. And having attacked that leadership, they will overcome that leadership and in its place plant the leadership that is based on divine principles, 
and love, counsel, and desires. Praise the Lord. So that's, that's how it's going to work. Now, because Judah be the first to break camp, Judah goes for the leaders. Judah, like I said yesterday, does not start from um, somewhere behind. Judah goes, makes straight for the elders, for the gates, for the principality, for the power, in a, in a, in a geographical expression. Praise God. Sorry for that. Something, you know, in a geographical expression. So Judah is the first to break camp, to go forth. And what Judah attacks is the leadership. Leadership of thoughts, leadership of politics, leadership of religion, leadership of um, the expression of family life and all that um, with the people who teach about the seven mountains teach. but we know that there are more than seven mountains there are I mean seven endeavors seven mountains relate to the, um, the seven um, civilizations of men that's what their city is built upon so the city is built upon seven mountains you know it means that Babylon is constructed using the principles of this world that's what Babylon is constructed upon you understand so um, it does not mean that there are physical seven mountains hallelujah so they go for the the mountains they go for the structure the leadership of that structure they go spiritually against it and they go you know uh, physically also against it. What I mean by physically means that eventually the sum of their activities will change the physical structure of leadership in every sphere, in every sphere of man's life, of human life. You know, and all that. Politically, everything is going to change because the Bible says we are going to reign on the earth. Let's not, let's not miss that. We are going to reign on the earth. The believers are going to reign on the earth. We're going to physically reign on the earth. We're not just going to spiritually reign. We're not going to reign through Zoe, as it's been taught by the church age preachers today. Who told that, okay, we're going to be reigning in Zoe. We're going to see that. And in Zoe, reigning in Zoe means you have money because it's the abundance of life means to have money, to have health, to not have a lot of problems that you cannot overcome. Well, that's very good, but it's beyond that. It means abundance of life means to have life in its extremities immortality you know overcoming and all that so we're going to reign and then we're going to rule on the earth we're not going to uh, wait until um, we die before we begin to rule it is not just a spiritual ruling that you're ruling over sickness you're ruling over disease yeah we're going to rule over we're ruling, we're sh we should rule over sickness and over this but it does, it's not it's not it don't, it's not ended in that place. It's beyond there. Hallelujah. It's beyond ruling over sickness and over disease and over uh, marriage squabbles and all that things that's, that uh, scatter the home and all that. It's beyond that. It goes into the society we're going to rule on the earth. Now, ruling on the earth in two ways. It's the, the principles of God are going to rule these na the nations. And then apart from that, the people of God are going to rule over the nations. You know, let me share this secret with you. The reason why we have so much corruption in leadership today is because the sphere, the, uh, we don't have so much option because the, the people that are, we can choose from are, in any case, very corrupt. So what would happen is that there's going to come a time and a season where the principles of God is valued and established over every human principle. And then it is not those who have that, that principle of God those principles of God established in their life and ruling their lives that will be chosen for, poli for political leadership. And they're going to reign as kings. They're not going to reign with, uh, because they're going, they going to reign as sages. You know, the reign of sages is not democratic. He is wise. He's considered as wise. He's considered as truthful. He's considered as benevolent. So we're going to be having um, more of um, the... Uh, the non-democratic system, uh, which is monarchy, when the when the rule of Christ comes in, and I think they're already preempting it now. But one of Tommy Arayomi's prophecies said that um, we're going to have um, prime ministers 
becoming president and president becoming kings. He said it's not going to be like that in a jiffy, but that um, it's going to be subtle. That's, that's what I understood from what he said. It's going to be subtle to the place where we begin to get um, prime minister as acting more like president, not first among equals, but you know, and all that, like a president rules. And a president are going to act more like kings. And we have seen it in the world today. Right now, we're seeing um, Joe Biden giving, I think, 25 or is 35 now, executive orders from the president rather than go to the legislature to accomplish it. So the world is preempting, like the world always preempts the move of God. The world is preempting this. There's going to come a time when we are going to rule. And you see, the territories of man are beyond geographical expression. They are, in engineering, there are a thousand and one uh, um, uh, sphere and territories. In agriculture, in medicine, in all those areas, there are so many. There are so many. Uh, and then God's people are going to rule over uh, them. Hallelujah. Now, so um, we talked about uh, Judah yesterday. So today we're moving to Reuben. Reuben occupies the south side. They lead the army that occupied the south side. South side, and they have under them the tribe of God, and um, um, and the tribe of Simeon. They have over them. I mean, under them. So you have Reuben. Then you have Simeon, and you have God. You understand? Reuben, Simeon, God. Under um, uh, Judah, you have Zebulon and Issachar, you know, and all that. And under um, uh, the other man, the man um, Ephraim, Ephraim, you have um, Benjamin, and you have um, you have Benjamin. Then you have Manasseh, yeah, you have Manasseh, and then you have three more, and two more under Dan, uh, Dan making the third or the first, and then um, you have the twelve tribes arranged in different places. Now, the basis of all of this, or what this seeks to accomplish, is to make us know that we are the army of the Lord, and that we are the Israel of God, and that we have this army, we are this army, that we are. We are the one who bring God into human society through this form. In this format, we bring God into human society um, as a lion, as a, as a as an ox, as a flying eagle, and as the um, um, man, which represents the face of a man. So, um, Reuben leads the face of a man. The, the tribe to the south. Reuben leads this face of a man. Now, what is about the face of a man? The face of a man uh, is all that is of man. It is God ruling over all that is of man. That is the face of a man. Um, God restoring, bringing restoration to man, bringing restoration to humankind through this. Uh, what man in Christ is supposed to be. Will be extended, we including that will include his medicine, his education, his sexual relations, his um, physical appearance, the inward constitutions of his DNA. You understand, will be enhanced. You can imagine um, Adam, that first man that God created. How would you think he looked? In which way do you think he looked? You can imagine that, Adam. So this part of the army led by Reuben would restore man. And so in order to restore man, we have to fight against the army that is already on ground, which seeks to destroy man. It's an army that is already on ground, which seeks to destroy man. And that army um, includes principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, or this world, spiritual killers, high places, and they are human, um, you know, um, how do you say it now? They are human agents on the earth. There's another word I wanted to use, but okay, agents works well with it. So they are human agents on the earth. It includes all of them. So um, God 
is now sending his own, his ecclesia, because you see, the army is the ecclesia. Uh, you know, the army of God is the ecclesia. Now, they are not children, they are not pregnant women, they are, not, they are armies, strong men. And I'm not talking about physical strong men, I'm talking about spiritually. Strong in the Lord, you know, and the power of his mind. You know. So, these are going to fight against all the things in the world that the enemy has been used to destroy man. We don't know how much our bodies have been destroyed until the restoration comes. The body has been so destroyed. The drugs that have been manufactured, the food we are eating, the, the, um, our mentalities and the effect of that, of the mentality and the, the kind of toxins it releases to our bodies and the whatever, enzymes, whatever, I don't know, the acidic thing that it releases to our body, making our body weak consistently, you know, a lot of things are focused on the body of man. So you're hearing of gene technology, uh, biotech, and all of this. Is, all of these are targeted at the body of man to raise a, a, a class of people who are superior and then to eliminate the other class who cannot survive. That's what's going on. Now, and then we also know that through agriculture, through you know, you can imagine um, um, producing chicken that can that can be ready for eating by in three months, in two months, you know, and uh, all that. Now, those are kinds of things that produce cancer, that generate cancer. That we see, we shall live and not die. We shall live to declare God's works in the land of living in the name of Jesus. But these are the kinds of things that destroy the body of man. You understand? Um, on on. On natural sexual uh, sexual tendencies, perversions, and all that. These are the kinds of things that destroy the body of man. Now, in order to uh, enthrone the principles of God by this army that is led by Reuben, we must, we will first of all fight them. We will have to fight. We will have to stand against that which stands against divine purpose. We have to stand against that which stands against divine purpose in our lives, in the human life. Not just in your life as a person, but in the human experience. So our works are called out for us and it is very much, many, so much work. So much work to do. So much work to do. Now, we are, the first thing we're going to be doing is that we're going to be looking at who is man. What the prototype of that man. The psalmist said, what is man? And look at them, look at them, look at them. They die 80, they die 90. What is man that you acknowledge him? Huh? That you have made him the ruler over all your world. What is man? So we're going to ask ourselves that question. What is man? And we must be able to answer the question. What is man? Thou art mindful of him and the son of man. That thou have respect unto him. You understand? We have to answer. Because if we're going to restore, we have to have the original prototype. Now, the original prototype of man is Christ Jesus. So, we have to look into his life so that we can restore man back, the body of man back into what God has made the body of man from the beginning. So, we need to look at all of this and, um, and find out um, what God wants man to be. Hallelujah. This is very important. We need to look at this and find out what God wants, what God wants man to be like. So by God's grace, tomorrow, we will continue about what does God want man to be like? What is a prototype man? Who is the prototype man? Who does he want us to be like? What are, if we are remaking man into what God wants him to be, spirit, soul, and body, what is that standard into which we are bringing him in again? You understand? We have to look at the Lord Jesus Christ. We also look at Adam and certain saints. And then uh, we'll be able to find out um, why, why am I saying that? Because Christ is the totality of everything. But you see, Christ, it was not written, not every factor was written about Christ. That Christ and Christ in the body was not um, demonstrated by the Lord. Did I say? It was not written. Everything was not written. Everything that could be known about that body was not written relating to the Lord. Yeah. 
there are some that Enoch manifested, and then there's some that um, some other saints manifested. And all that. But we know Christ is the epitome man that we're supposed to look at. So we're going to be looking at Christ beginning from tomorrow. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Can we pray a little bit? Heavenly Father, we ask that you open the eyes of our understanding to understand what man is, so that this um, your people will be able to have a revelation and understanding. You know, uh, okay, somebody wants to be in my video. Okay, um, somebody bring them on camera. No, this is my question. Okay, it says it says his request. No, it says uh Lua Familiar Lucina wants to be in your video. Yeah. Bralu Familiar, do you want to be in our video? Is that what said concerning the other person? Yes. Sir. Okay, sorry, maybe maybe not. In case okay, let's just No no no, why not you? Praise God. So we're praying that Lord you will open the eyes of our understanding to understand who man is that you have made. So that we can restore man because we know that this is a very strong place of the battles of the last days. Satan wants to destroy the body of man, wants to make man in his own image and after his own likeness. But we know that you have made man in your image and in your own likeness. As the army of the Lord on the earth, help us, O oh God, to come into the place where we understand the standard that you have set, what you have made man to be like, what your desire is for man. Let it be so, Lord, in Jesus' name. Okay, thank you very much.